What's happening, guys? Welcome to GPS Fishing Maps. This is Captain RL, and I am a pretty serious bottom fisherman. Today, we're going to go over some of the bathymetric and sonar relief shading in Topo. All those in one. It's all sonar relief shading on the Navionics app here, and show you why so many fish are caught here off Panama City and um, all the way down to Apalachicola and back up to Destin, uh, and why the bottom is so beautiful where to slow pitch jig and where to vertical jig we'll talk about a little bit of jig weights as well at any rate again you guys welcome to gps fishing maps this is captain rl let's get right into it with this mapping okay guys as promised we'll show you this bathymetric sonar shading relief let's start out though and just Let's zoom out on this. This is just an Avionics boating app on a on a really, really pretty good tablet. It's an Android tablet. And let's just take a look. And um, this is some of our spots from FL Fishing Spots here. And a lot of this stuff is, is the inshore stuff you'll see. But we're going to get out to deep water. Um, that's our main goal today is to cover the deep, you know, the deep water fishing or deep drop fishing out of Panama City and Mexico Beach, Port St. Joe, and Apalachicola, which is, you know, the squiggle, the wings, and some other ledges that really aren't named this whole area just so you guys know this whole area here um get set up just right as you can see squiggle is right here and i'll put the, the crosshairs on it and you've got the spur over here and then the soto canyon is here um this area some people call this whole area out in here the DeSoto canyon but really a lot of this is also the destin dome um is also what it's called um and you got up north here you got the pensacola bank um up this way and then you've got the ap bank which is the apalachicola bank down in here and uh you'll you'll see all this as we zoom in on these maps and get closer with the bathymetric uh sonar shading relief but that's what we're going to talk about today so let's get into it um you guys let's start um let's just start up here just off pcb i guess anywheres and again, you can get these these, these fishing spots at uh, flfishingspots.com. And I think today we're going to go straight into the to the deep drop stuff. And if you see this, you'll see it all over the screen here. This DDBK just on the charts here. That's the Destin Dome Bank. And as you can see, this is uh, my personal stuff here. We've got quite a few um, quite a few spots. Um, this is all all good bottom fishing this is if you look at the depth here we're already in 300 and you'll see everything if you look at all those spots right there gathered in one spot in one one area right in here where the, my, the, my mouse is moving you'll see uh, that everything is gathered around there's a ledge here and as you can tell the water there's a water depth change here as well so we're going to zoom in a little further here and, and look at some more detail okay get down a little closer you know what is all this madness about we're getting closer now i'm gonna zoom in some more and if you'll look right there there's a mound right here and there's a lot centered around that and there's also some smaller bounds that you can't tell because it gets kind of pixely here on this uh on this tablet on a phone it's a little more clear because the the pixelation is tighter on a on a phone instead of a tablet on a looking at this kind of stuff but if you look on down here you'll see this line of deep drop spots this is in 282 feet as you can see above my mouse here and um you see that right there see that pinnacle sticking up you got that and is, is it a rock pile is it a boulder is it a pinnacle who cares and, and who and who knows um unless you want to dive to 300 feet and find out whatever it is it holds fish and it tends the areas like this tend to grow live or natural bottom off of them you know and it can grow you know a quarter mile off of it because once that growth starts um nothing really slows it down unless there's you know some sort of you know impact from humans but normally these 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 areas grow you know the the mound like here the the rocks here won't really get any higher they'll slightly will with growth but they spread out and that's what creates these huge areas of bottom this stuff spread out over the hundreds it's been here this stuff ain't new 
so again we're out here we're in around 300 feet and um, I'm gonna try to find some some better looking some better looking uh, ledges here for you we'll back out just a little bit we're zoomed in a bunch so let's just roll down to the south a little ways here bear with me with the map as I gotta gotta see where I'm at here because I've got way too many spots loaded in here yes if we get down by the wings you know I'm gonna give away some information here that, that a lot of people don't know a lot of people will be mad that I that I'm doing this probably but okay like you, you take this we're out here on the wings off Apalachicola so if you take this for instance and our depth here if you'll see if you look you look at the top of the crosshairs in the white tabs 336 feet whoops sorry oh one more chance here guys give me one more chance yeah 300, 372 here at the very top of this ledge is 336 okay watch my mouse move just down to the bottom of this ledge so it was 336 right look at that that's a 90 foot drop basically off of that ledge you don't think there's not going to be fish on the edge of this ledge and even down here at the bottom there's going to be fish here um it, this is the this is deep drop territory that's what this is this is all deep drop territory my mouse is circling and i know it's not deep deep drop but it's three and four hundred okay this is slow pitch jigging heaven and you know most of the most of the guys like george polo and um johnny stedham um Benny Ortiz, all the guys that are real good with the with the slow pitch jigging. You know, I've followed them for years, and um, I've met a couple of them. And all these guys, because we slow pitch jig a lot, we, and we live in Georgia, Northeast Florida area, and uh, we camp out also, you know, just above Tampa at Port Ritchie a lot too. So we slow pitch jig a lot. And here, you know, a lot of these guys like either a gram, a gram of of jig weight. Oh, this is slow pitch but a gram per jig weight per foot of water so here you'd want a three to four hundred gram jig now benny ortiz he likes about a gram and a half depending per foot which makes it significantly more not quite double um but time a half so he might would fish you know a five five or six hundred here but here's the thing and George Polo also says this too and has said it in passing that you can you don't have to you really don't have to bring a 400 gram jig here if the current's not bad you might if the current's bad you got a whole different deal you need a longer more slender deep drop I mean slow pitch jig um, if you're dropping here to the bottom because you got to maintain that contact with the bottom you got to try and stay vertical if the current's running around this corner around this ledge here um you have a bigger problem have to go a little heavier but i what i would do when i start out here because we fish apalachicola quite a good bit especially josh and i so if we go here and we're fishing let's say we're in this we're fishing let's say we're fishing 330 i'm going to start out with a 250 gram jig and i'm going to start out with something with a little wider profile and just if the current's hauling butt you you won't be able to fish a leafy jig you know nothing wide you need a you need you need a, you need a more so you know a more a longer more skinnier jig than that if the current's running but if it's not you can go ahead and drop right here um with probably a 250 and uh, we have many times but again it depends on what kind of current and, and, and wind you got going on that day and if both are favoring each other you know you might you get into a two knot to three knot drift you're probably gonna have to use a 500 or 600 here um, up on top it can be running faster than it will here in the deeper part of it let's zoom into that ledge a little closer and you can kind of see some more I don't know if you can quite see the depth but it starts kind of getting pixely again um, but you'll see look at that look at that right there I mean are you absolutely kidding me this this whole area and you can see the ledges see you can see them layered you look right around in here and look at look at the layers where i'm tapping the screen look how that's layered down and it falls down into that deeper water and then you got you've got some some formations of some kind of you know limestone or rock or something right here um, that we're seeing as well right in here so all this is good fishing and also you can vertical jig this you know speed jig it 
take out a 350, sometimes a 250, whatever it takes right here with a vertical jig because you're not worried about, you know, the current really, really matters with a slow pitch jig, of course. Um, but when you're vertical jigging, you just need something that's going to get to the bottom and stay fairly vertical because you're just ripping it back up to the top anyways or ripping it halfway and going back down, ripping a quarter way going back down. I like the 30% rule where you come up 30, 40% of the way. It depends on what I'm working in the column. I'm probably just going to stay near the bottom and fish. You know, I'll come up maybe 100 feet, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm uh, just speed vertical jigging. Slow pitch jigging, I'm going to work the bottom pretty hard. That first 15, 20 feet off the bottom, I'm going to stay in that range. But that's that's entirely up to you guys. Um, I like black jigs with the white iridescent. It just depends on what's going on. Sometimes I use blue, sometimes I use pink, white, whatever. I mean, whatever whatever I think they might want. So you can, you can figure that part out yourself, guys, of course. So I do highly suggest you watch, you look up... Um, you know, you could you can look at johnnyjigs.com and Johnny Jigs on uh, YouTube, or you can look at you can look up George Polo with um, Jig Pro. Those guys uh, they do they do a real good job explaining slow pitch stuff. Now, vertical jigging has been around a lot longer. It's been around for I mean decades, and uh, that's that's how we started fishing. Is just with uh, you know the pyramid shaped jigs and uh ripping them just ripping a silver silver foil jig that weighed you know 25 ounces 20 ounces just these huge jigs to fish this deep water and they work too and um diamond jigs is what they're mostly known as we called them pyramid jigs you know back in the 90s but anyway this is just the wings here i'm just kind of zooming around i'm gonna zoom out now i know i'm probably talking too much and not showing you guys enough but this is why our spots this just to brag on us for just a second this is why our spots are so good and 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 they produce so many fish is because if you look at where this stuff is is placed i mean it's this this stuff is on ledges it's it's on places where you know there's fish being caught and uh our, our guys don't they, they don't mess around they like to run long runs and this is what they do is they help us locate you know the deep drop spots because obviously us as a team i got five or six on my team that fish with me different boats we can't be everywhere at once and there's no way we can go fish all these spots and this line of spots you're probably wondering what in the world well that's part of an autopilot route there again these are some of my personal spots in here um that this is all these spots part of an autopilot route like i said and um there's some good drop along there you know for some some deep dropping and um this is in, in like 220 here 220 to 230 along this but i've i've trolled and done a controlled drift with the trolling motor and i have also slow trolled this whole ledge here and i've done real well with 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 cobia, catching cobia um, i've caught some dolphin there um a couple black fin just just some different pelagics nothing insane but really good stuff now on the out here on, on these ledges we've caught all kinds of groupers all kinds of snappers of course aj's are everywhere um not really what i'm looking for but it's nice to drop and catch something so all these ledges produce and this this is why the gulf is is so unique because you don't have this stuff uh straight across the gulf from here on the atlantic side you just don't have this stuff you got one ledge 80 miles offshore just about in most places um, from jacksonville up man it's it's way out there it's you know 80 100 miles from shore especially from the inside of an inlet you're going to run 100 one way you guys let's measure some of this out okay so if we um get out of here so if we clear that let's just look let's take a look real quick okay and by the way this is the pipeline here we do we you know we sell all we sell all this stuff we don't sell the entire pipeline but we do sell the parts where it's exposed and we've caught fish on it so um let's just say we're leaving out of panama city okay so we're going to do some measurements so we, we started out talking about pcb so st andrews bay so let's go from st andrews bay out to the pipeline for instance the pipeline's in about 700 straight you know straight southwest of here so, uh, of the of the St. Andrews Bay, it's about 65 miles, 64 miles. Okay, so that gives you an idea. But just to get to 300 feet, let me clear this. 
now if you just wanted to get to 300 feet and start getting into some good you know some good ledges like the st joe ledges here let me get my measuring tool zoom back out real quick here this thing will jump all over the place using a mouse okay and then let's let's take it to let's take it to the, let's take it to there okay we'll take it back to st andrews bay and pcb uh you're looking at let me get the looking at about 45 48 miles to get into some the really really good fishing in that 200 to 300 400 foot um and that's that's gonna be where your good fishing is um the wings uh even better so if we took it from here let's see so if we took it from the wings and go back up to panama city okay if we took it from the wings and we went back to back to pcb you're looking at just about 55 miles is all it is uh so there's good fishing to be had within 50 miles i know a lot of people don't want to run that um and i get it and that's why this area out here is not quote unquote raped because it just doesn't get i mean it gets fished but long lining is not allowed you know in the in, the, in these areas here uh, for the most part it's not and you'll see those notations on your charts um, but again this is just an avionics app using the sonar release shading and uh, i'll show you that right quick so you go to menu and we go over there to the to the settings in the navionics app menu this is be about the same views on ipad iphone or android so and we you go to map options okay this paid version is only 20 or so dollars a year i mean it, there's this is a no-brainer you can import our gpx files into it your gpx files whatever you want you can import into this as many as you'd like especially with the android it'll take double the spots or triple the spots the the ipad or iphone will but it works with iphone i think you can only put a thousand spots in there though is we have sonar chart as you see right up here at the top have sonar chart selected and we have sonar chart shading if you'll look at this area here that i'm tapping on okay we'll go back to this menu and i'll show you what what it looks like to change it okay so keep your eye right here where the mouse is moving okay let's change it to if you look over here back to the left on the menu i go to release shading look at that we get some color then and this can start defining things a little different so i want to start out kind of plain jane now we're going to switch to this view and we'll see what you think so let me zoom out a little bit let's find high contour let's look at um the wings just have such a good edge on it let's let's go back to the wings again so we'll, we'll zoom in right here in the wings again and look at this now you can really see why some of these spots are where they are now you look at this bottom in here look at this that's beautiful stuff in 300 foot i mean that's it, it it's awesome those are mini ledges there's a lot of swiss cheese bottom in that too so that's a great area you can see up here which i don't i don't even have marked because i know where it is but look at that ledge look at that and this stuff you know it's 200 something foot out here there's going to be good fish in there so zoom out a little bit now let's look at the main wing cut this is the cut ledge and the, now you can see why these spots are where they are this is they the guys have gotten this so precise of where they want to start their drifts and start their fishing and just think of the stuff that they've never fished this is a huge area so just giving you some insight on how this looks out here and why people are so successful in that 300 plus foot that is why my friends and then look up here there's so much out here look at those little ledges little small seamounts but the ledges matter so when, you, you, when you're going from 288 282 to 288 300 feet these ledges matter even though it'd be eight to 12 foot ledges right there 
let's see what else we can see here okay let's go on up a little bit now you can see this is this is one of my favorite ledges to fish here on the Destin bank on the Destin Dome bank and again here we go okay looking at 360 feet up on the top actually less than that you're looking at 336 again look what it drops to 420 that's 80 90 foot that's 80 90 foot drop over just a short distance and where you see those contour lines like see these contour lines in here they're real condensed they're close together as compared to say out here where they're further apart look how condensed they are when you see that that's a very steep tide driven drawn out ledge where it's been cut cut by the ocean movement for uh, you knows how many hundreds of years or thousands of years but that's that's what you're looking for is those tight contours but we no longer have to read that because we have this sonar relief ship freaking 40 but the contours you can see is what's made up that bottom and you can see how they do how the contours look they're tight together and when you see that that means steep but I think I about waste enough of you guys time but again we sell the spots this is the panhandle deep drop area here and again not every one of these spots are, are on here but most of them are um just no chain spots where there's like like here where you've got just you know i've got you know 60 and, and a quarter mile that's not necessary so but we do have around 400 in this area and it covers from pensacola all the way down to apalachicola so it covers you got pensacola you got destin you got uh, panama city Port St. Joe, Mexico Beach, you know, Apalachicola, Garibald, Cape Sandblast, everything's, you know, everything's right off of there. And again, parts of the pipeline are in this. The spur, um, over here's the spur. Let's see what that looks like, which is swordfish territory. And that's 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 good looking stuff. And the tiles aren't wanting to load any further west than that right this minute. I think my internet's you'd be a little problem there but anyways you can get the idea so if you've got any questions guys um feel free to feel free to shoot us an email at gpsfishingmaps at gmail.com or uh check out fl i'll put it in the description you check out flfishingspots.com and um and click on deep drop spots i'll put a direct link to the deep drop spots and to the panhandle so you'll you know this is the kind of stuff that's that's out there and again there's around 400 spots here um, and this is the Navionics boating app um, and sometimes it's labeled depending on how you look it up um, it's called Navionic Marine and Lakes but it is the Navionics boating app you, it'll be the first one that comes up on the results and there is a free version but you're not going to be able to load waypoints to it and you're not going to get all leaf shading so it's best to spend the 20-23 bucks whatever it is it's for a whole year and you can look at this in any area so it makes it nice so I hope you guys got something out of this. And again, we appreciate all your business. We've been in business for around 18, 19 years. We appreciate the loyal following that we do have. And I'm just showing you guys, we don't sell just public spots. In fact, deep drop is what we've been specializing in for a very, very long time. And um, we also have offshore. And not all our stuff is public. It's not. We do have some public spots listed on our spots, you know, in that in the in the design of the of the spots but there's not that's not what we're selling what you're paying for at flfishingspots.com paying for the diversity of spots and the spots that you're not going to find um, on your own very easily without spending tons of time out there and that's why we've got a network of guides to, to to provide this stuff so again anyways you guys have a good day and we'll talk to you soon fish on be safe out there guys y'all have a great day